Many years ago, we used to take in a lot of 1275 customer cranks and we used to modify them with the wedging and regrinding and heat treating and balancing these crankshafts. But because the supply of old units from customers and ones we used to buy in has dried up now, we've stopped modifying these crankshafts for many years. Anyway, recently we acquired a batch of brand new old stock Rover 1275 A plus crankshafts. And we've had them fully modified. These have been modified on a CNC machine to a program which puts in many, many features to the wedging and lightening process. Roughly, we've removed one and a half kilos from this crank and most of it has come off via the wedging which has taken place from the centre line of the main bearing forwards towards the big end. A large amount of material has been removed from just here, which has no use at all to the crankshaft. We flattened off the crankshaft just here and then the wedging has also been run from this web to this one, from this one to this one to this one to here to here to here. Now you'll also notice that we have profiled around the big end. So there's an angular cut here, a radial cut here, another angle cut here. This is to get rid of all the surplus material that's on the web around the big end that's not needed. The reason we remove this weight is to decrease the rotating mass of the crankshaft, which will allow the crankshaft to accelerate quicker. And obviously, the further you can remove the weight from the center line of the crankshaft, the more beneficial. That is the reason for all of the profile milling around each side of each big end. While the crankshaft is also on the CNC machine, we drill a a hole straight through the main bearing, right the way through and out of the other side. This is just to give double feed of oil to get up to the big end. So comes in this side, also comes in to the side on each main. We then take it to the balancing machine and we balance it down to race limits. After that, it is then sent off for nigh tempering which is what gives it this black surface finish. So it's nigh tempered, then it's put through a process called QPQ, which gives it the better surface finish. It's a polishing treatment after nigh tempering. After that, it goes back to the crankshaft grinding company and they relap all the journal sizes to size. You'll notice some of them have still got a shading of black on them, but this is fine. Some of them will clean up where they're perfectly shiny. Some of them are slightly black, as you'll see, but that's no problem. They run like that. So just a couple more points. On the A-plus crank, you'll notice that these have what we call fillet rolled radius. So if you look just where the journal joins the web of the crankshaft, there is a slight undercut, and that's what they call a fillet rolled radius. Obviously, uh, these crankshafts are brand new, and you can't get the old positive radius type crankshafts any longer. But the other benefit of these crankshafts is, obviously, it's a brand new unit. It's never even been in an engine. And also, you will notice, with it being new, the crankshaft taper is perfect. No pickup marks, no friction welding marks, just a perfect, perfect taper for the new flywheel, hopefully, that you'll fit. We'll slide straight on and torque straight up. So there's the crankshaft, but we also have a crankshaft package, which is basically the crankshaft after we've just gone through, a set of the A plus H-beam con rods with the 20.6 little end, 
and a set of die-cast Amiga pistons. Choices, obviously, 20, 40, 60, 73.5, flat top or dished. And the crankshaft also comes with a set of Duraglide ACL bearings. If you've got any queries or questions about the crank kits or the crankshafts or the conrods, don't hesitate, give us a call or drop us a message.